were looking for challenging curriculum with a strong faith based and also we were looking for a school that would foster interaction with other kids and activities before and after school. I wanted him to grow up in a Christian environment where certain values and morals of selflessness and serving others to be important to him. I wanted those things to be taught alongside his educational curriculum, not as an afterthought, you know, but something that is just as important as the educational things he's going to be learning. Uh, we're a Catholic family. Uh, we believe in the Catholic faith. We grew up both Catholics. Uh, to have our son be able to go to Catholic school, it's, it's everything for us. Our role with the parent is kind of give these kids as they grow up from pre-K, three up to eighth grade when they graduate, to hopefully that they establish some type of moral compass about how they're going to lead their lives. We try to instill that characters and values, how it's important, and so that they have some kind of direction. Once the students come in here in the morning, everybody really assembles and gets together in the gym. That's our time as a school community. We started off with prayers in the morning. A special intentions for mom, dad, brother, sister, a sixth relative, their dog. And it's nice to see that they express themselves in front of their friends and because then we can pray as a community. What impresses me most about the school are the kids, especially the way that they treat one another. The fact that their faith definitely plays a role in their life and that they're striving to be good Christians. Above learning about math or developing a skill in English, for me as a pastor certainly what's most important is that our children are growing in the knowledge of the Lord. We're a school of small class sizes and they get a lot of individual attention. We have a lot of opportunities, a lot of academic things that they can do, be successful at. We also offer every child in the school technology classes. There's laptop carts available. We have iPads we're bringing into the school now. So they're all exposed to all the newest technology. Students also put on a weekly news program where they do all the writing, the articles, they do the filming, they do the editing, and we have the capability with the closed circuit to show it to the whole school. The growth that happens in first grade is tremendous. They become such independent learners and they have a little bit more faith in themselves and a little bit more trust in themselves that they can do this and they will be successful and it's all good. <laughs> and when I get to the end of the year and I'm saying, well, you're going to need to know this in second and third grade, they get very excited. Hey, I can do this. I, you know, I'm ready for this and, and it's okay. First grade does do the garden outside and they get so excited to do it. It's a lot of fun to do with them too, but it also, it's such a cross-curricular thing where you can bring in social studies, science, and it brings in ELA, a lot of the writing activities. It just lends itself to all that. And of course, they're outside, they're moving, so it's kinesthetic. It's not sitting in a desk and just looking at things um, on a screen or, or in a book. First you're gonna estimate it, then you're The gonna type of learning environment that I like to give the students is I really like to center it around what we're learning. I make sure that they are engaged in what they're doing. So if we're doing like a, a group discussion or something like that, you know, their attention is drawn to like what I need them to pay attention to. If we're doing like a science experiment, then I like to use science lab with the tables. So that way they're concentrated just on their group, what's going on, following the steps in the process. My thing is, the higher you set the standards for the children, the more that they're going to actually reach it. You know, if you come in strong at the beginning of the year and you set your expectations high, like, they'll really surprise you as to what they're capable of doing. France decides to do something to Germany. Eighth grade is such a fabulous year. It's such a special year with helping them to get ready for high school, seeing what you're teaching them is going to impact or help them when they move on to high school. They're older, they have opinions, you can have great discussions with them. It's nice to get their perspective on things. One of the most fun things I think about eighth grade is our relationship we have with our prayer buddies. Eighth graders work with and are partnered with kindergarten and throughout the year we spend a lot of time with them, praying with them, taking them to church, doing projects with them, just being a role model to the youngest children in our building. Well, those little kindergartners, they look up to the eighth graders and 
they have a good example there of love and sharing and how to relate to God, whether you're in kindergarten or whether you're in eighth grade. The way that the specials benefit our children is that it develops the whole child. Not every child is going to excel in math or reading or those sort of things, but maybe they're fantastic in art. So if that child has a place in our building where they can excel and they can feel comfortable and like this is where I shine, I think that's where what the specials are for. Of all our programs in music, stands out above it and it's just due to the teacher and just her enthusiasm with the children. They love to go to music class. Students from K through 8 come for music once a week. Beginning in second grade they learn to play the recorder. In about fourth grade we start really focusing in on music theory. They learn music history, a little bit of multicultural music, straight through to eighth grade and then once they're in eighth grade we start working on music composition. We participate in all the Archdiocesan festivals for band and for chorus. We have families who come in who, are, who have children who are musical and they're looking to have a program because not every school has that anymore. They're looking for a school that, where they can develop those talents. And then there are parents who weren't even aware that we had it who now are taking advantage of it. I think Sacred Heart does a remarkable job getting the kids ready to leave here and be good, productive high school students. And a lot of them come back and say how prepared they really are. Sacred Heart is such a personal school. Your son, your daughter is not just one of hundreds coming in for that school year. They have a name. And before my son even walked in on his first day of school, his principal knew exactly who he was. They set the bar very high at Sacred Heart. And I think that's the way it should be. They're preparing my children to go on to high school and then to college. And they're doing a great job so far. Not all the parents are lucky enough to be here every day like I am or like the teachers are. So we want them to see what their children are doing every day. We show them the little things, the little activities, the assemblies. And just as one of those kids walks down the hallway with a big smile on their face, it makes them happy. And it's our way of sharing with them how they're growing, how they're maturing. And all the happiness that they see on their faces.